Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker is a very busy man. Perhaps that's why it was so surprising when an hour-long phone call transcript between himself and a 20-something reporter from the Buffalo Beast surfaced online. But it turned out that the phone call was a prank, with the reporter posing as one of Scott Walker's biggest campaign donors. But according to a Politico article from March 31st, 2011, while Scott Walker was certainly punked, it's the people of Wisconsin who feel like they're still waiting for Ashton Kutcher to pop out from behind a trash can. They've been the victims of some surreal political shenanigans, reaching its zenith in January of 2011, when all of the state legislature's Democrats fled to Illinois to avoid voting on Scott Walker's controversial anti-union legislation. The bill would have ended collective bargaining rights for public sector union employees, a method that he thought believed would help cut costs. Indeed, according to an NPR article from February 23, 2011, these recent trying economic times are making many states change their tune on everything from education to transportation. As comedian Stephen Colbert put it, these days you could even probably mess with Texas for 20 bucks. And Wisconsin is no exception, facing a nearly $3.6 billion budget deficit. Its neighbors, Illinois and Ohio, are facing similar cost catastrophes and are also considering Scott Walker's approach in slashing unions first. Thus, it's important for us to address the question, should other states consider Scott Walker's controversial anti-union bill? The answer to this question is clearly no. Certainly, states should be fiscally responsible, but Walker's implementation leaves a lot to be desired, and this is for three main reasons. First is his unwillingness to compromise. Secondly is the fact that his grandstanding has led to a lot of negative press. And finally, because his cost-cutting is strictly partisan. So first, other states should not consider Scott Walker's method of cost-cutting because he's been unable to compromise. Scott Walker likes to believe that many Americans agree with him on the issue of unions, but indeed he's left a lot of viable options on the table, explains a report from the Wisconsin State Journal on February 11, 2011. At the beginning of the controversy, the Wisconsin Teachers Union stepped up without prompting in order to offer a program that would offer nearly $470 million in cuts to personal benefits, salaries, and pension plans. Scott Walker simply ignored them, perhaps leaving better options on the table. And according to a New York Times article from February 16, 2011, he instead chose the path of most resistance. With the end of collective bargaining comes a major shift in Wisconsin politics, changing the way the nuts and bolts of government work in the legislative and the lobbying process. In doing so, he's caused a lot of political and legal turmoil. And so if sta other states want to avoid similar problems, they should also avoid Scott Walker's method of cost cutting because his inability of, uh, of compromising has left many creative options out on the chopping block. But second, we should also consider that other states should not consider state wa Scott Walker's cost cutting method of slashing unions first because in doing so, Scott Walker has attracted some pretty negative press. Scott Walker has openly claimed that all Americans share his fear of unions. But a Gallup poll from February 22, 2011 argues otherwise, that instead 61% of us believe that instead the end of collective bargaining is the wrong solution to the wrong problem. It would be different if Scott Walker had political support, as sometimes it's necessary to bypass public opinion in order to make the right choice. But argues a Time Magazine article from March 7, 2011, no other Republican governors have stepped forward in order to publicly support and embrace Scott Walker's bill. Indeed, he's brought a lot of negative press and has very little support, making him a true lone wolf. And his lone wolf attitude isn't exactly attracting teachers and other public sector union employees to Wisconsin in droves. As such, he's done a great disservice to the state of Wisconsin, and other states could avoid his pitfalls by trying to cut costs in other areas. But last, and perhaps most importantly, we need to examine the fact that other states simply should not uh, try out Scott Walker's union-busting bill, because his bill has been strictly partisan. It's become increasingly apparent over the past few months that Scott Walker's most controversial piece of legislation within Wisconsin's history has actually been a campaign for re-election. Indeed, according to a Newsweek article from March 7, 2011, the Cook brothers, implicated in the original prank phone call, were responsible for diverting some of Scott Walker's campaign funds into television ads to glorify the piece of legislation. 
but perhaps more chilling is its Republican exceptionalism. As according to a Business Week report from February 28, 2011, all of the public sector union employees' collective bargaining rights were cut, unless you happen to be a member of the police, firefighters, or state troopers' unions. And what do all of those unions have in common? They all tend to lean Republican. This is particularly shocking considering the role of public unions in our society. As Joseph Walker's 2000 book, The Public Sector Union Employees, argues that these public sector union employees need more backup from the government, no matter how uncomfortable that may be. They tend to take care of things like kindergartners and potholes that can't give them tips at the end of the day. And the satisfaction of a job well done can't pay for your ER bills. This is why it's important for the state to pony up for these public sector union employees, no matter how controversial that may be. Thus, Scott Walker simply sidestepped an important debate in our country about the role of unions for his own political gain, a mistake that states should avoid and should avoid following his example. So today, we considered the question, should other states consider Scott Walker's controversial anti-union legislation? And we saw that the answer was clearly no for three main reasons. First, because of his inability to compromise. Secondly, because he's attracted lots of negative press. And last, because his bill has been strictly partisan. With the success of the first prank phone call for the liberal blogosphere, many other pranksters may be calling into Scott Walker's office wondering whether or not his refrigerator's running. But the real question should be whether or not his government can run under the weight of his bad decisions.